Today I'm going to show you how to import photos from your SD card into Olympus Workspace, uh, discuss a couple of the options during the import, and then uh, give you a few ideas on maybe how you want to organize your photos. So the first thing I like to do is just open up Olympus Workspace and uh, then gaze over here at the uh, file manager or folder tree. And I'm using a Windows 10 computer, so I'm going to assume that, uh, you know, Apple might be very similar, hopefully so. But moving on, the, uh, the last place I left off here was just the Olympus Workspace uh, subfolder within the pictures folder. And this is uh, set up by default, I think, when you install Olympus Workspace. So you should have this here. Now, at this point, this is when I insert my SD card. And you'll hear the little beep. And I'm using a USB hub, so it's, it's a little glitchy. It, it, it loads the SD, then un unloads it, then loads it back in. But now we're good. And you'll notice that there is now an SDHC icon here, or, or in the folder tree. So I'm going to look in here, and then you'll see two subfolders here, and I want to go into the digital camera image folders. So I'll go here, and then in there, there's a subfolder called 100 Olympus. And I just took a couple of test shots here on my table, and I eyeball them and make sure these are the images that I want to import. Now, another way you can quickly get to this folder is you can just click import from camera and it should jump right to this folder but it doesn't always do that sometimes it says camera not connected sometimes it goes to a different SD card if you have multiple SD card readers on your computer so I never like to use this uh, but this particular window does give you some options that we're not going to see when we do it the other way so let me just point those out the first one is this import log files so if this is something like if you're using a TG5 or I think the new EM1X has this ability to track uh, your, you know, wherever you're going, if you're hiking and stuff, uh, it'll import those log files to those GPS coordinates, etc. Uh, this is not something I use at all, really. <laughs> so I don't worry about this one. And then you also get this option to delete the files on the SD card after they've been imported. So uh, this is another option I don't like to check off because I, if I'm going to delete something, I, I don't want to do it right away. I want to be sure everything imported properly, everything's on the computer, and then I'll put it back in the uh, camera and format the SD card. And then you can check this box, omit photos already imported. And again, I don't like to use this because it has not been very consistent. Uh, one example would be, I've already imported these folders once in a different take when I was trying to make this video. And um, if I check this box now, you'll see that it won't import anything that I previously imported. However, I've deleted these files off of my computer. So I, I, you know, if I inadvertently delete files off my computer, I don't want Workspace uh, telling me that you don't need to import these files when actually I do. So personally, I prefer not to import from camera option. I like to do it this way. So what I'll do is I found the exact folder and exact pictures I want to import uh, in the folder tree here when I was browsing. What I'll do is I'll say import from speci specified location. And then I'll browse down to the same place in the folder tree, the SDHZ drive E. I'll select DCIM and then I'll select this folder. And if you do happen to have log files, you have to import those separately, but uh, mo most of us don't. Uh, so we're going to continue this way. And then here are the f uh, files that I want to import. And I can double check by going to a thumbnail view and looking at them. And I can say, yes, these are the pictures I want to import. Now, when you're in this window, you can uh, make the thumbnails a little larger if they were too small for you before, or you can back off. If you have, you know, thousands of files, you can back off and look at, you know, all thousand files this way. And the only time I really uh, make the thumbnails this small is when, for example, I do a time-lapse video and I have, you know, 
300 pictures uh, that are virtually the same and I don't want to import those because I've already created time-lapse movie in the camera so what I might do is uh, shrink the thumbnails down and only select the pictures that I want to import so what I can do is let's say these first four uh, or five are the images that I want to import but I don't want to import any of these and you'll notice over here it'll say number of files selected five uh, another way you can select uh, files is down here with the filter and I can click this box to on and then I can select do I want to import only the JPEGs or do I want to import only the RAWs or I can just import only the movies or I can do movies in RAW, or I can do movies in JPEG, etc. But in this case, I want to import everything, so we'll just turn the filter off. Uh, you have another filter here where you can select recent images, recent month, etc. And this, this is a little ambiguous to me, so I just ignore that altogether as well. But there is an option there for you. Now, going over to this side, you'll see that the import destination is where it's going to copy these files onto your computer and again the default setting is Olympus workspace and this is something set up uh, by default but you can change the default destination in the options uh, panel and I'll do a different video on the options panel so for today we'll just work with the default and then there's two more checkboxes that are checked here and this is probably because I had them checked before but they may or may not be checked when you uh, look at your files here or start importing. So I always check this one, create subfolder with the shoot date automatically. So it's going to create a folder called 2019-03-26 to um, uh, underneath this Olympus Workspace folder. And it'll, it'll be clearer when we actually import the folder. And then I can save the videos to a subfolder under this one if I want to. I don't normally do that, so I'm going to turn this off. But if you want your videos in a separate folder for some reason, you can do it this way. And then here under Advanced Settings, this is another thing that I use a lot. And you can see the default setting actually is original name. So it's going to import these files with the names that you see here, the file names. But when I import them, I like to change the names to this particular uh, naming convention. I like to have the shoot date and time as the first part of the file name and, I, and you can you can change the way it does this but I like to do it with the four digit year first then the month day and then the hours minutes seconds because that's going to be virtually unique name in of itself and I do this because a lot of times I'm shooting with multiple cameras and uh, sometimes the cameras will have the same file name for different pictures so I like to rename the files when they come in so that they don't inadvertently overwrite each other. Um, Olympus Workspace doesn't, doesn't uh, overwrite files. It, what it does, it actually appends to the file name like a 01 if it sees two files with the same name. But I think as a matter of habit or good practice, it's best to use uh, unique file names as much as possible. And then the next thing is I'll put a dash after the shooting date, so I can add a dash here. And you can change this to anything, like a star or whatever is a normal uh, character that you can use for file name. I like to use a dash. And then as an optional string, uh, you can, and what I like to do is I like to choose the camera that I shot with. So in this case, I shot with the EM1 Mark II. If I had been shooting with my PL8, I would select this. So what I'm going to get is the shooting date dash EPL8 or EM1 Mark II. So this is the optional string I like to use. And I also do this in my camera. I set up the file name and convention to tell me uh, M12. So I know this was the EM1 Mark II camera. But when I'm importing, I'll rename it this way for the shooting date first, then the optional string. And then I don't normally need anything after this, uh, you know, to make this even more unique. But I can. You know, if you want to make the file name even more unique, it's going to be longer. We can add a, a sequential number, starting with number one, up 
you know, for two digits or three digits, you know, if you have a thousand pictures, you're going to want four digit numbers. Uh, but this is not something I use very much either. So I'm going to take the dash out here and I'm going to click OK. And the reason I like to put the uh, camera model here is because when I'm recording video, the video files don't tell me which camera I recorded the video with. So this is very helpful, particularly with video files. Now with your image files, the camera model number is stored in the uh, file itself. So you can always find or see what camera took that picture, but you cannot always tell what camera took the video. So for me, because I work with multiple cameras, it, it's helpful to me to know that this was the M1 Mark II, this was my TG5, this was my PL8, etc. So that's how I name my files. And then, um, since we check this create subfolder with shoot date automatically, you can also here give the folder a naming rule. And I, again, I like to do year, four digit year first and month and day. And this just makes it easier if you're browsing your computer, you can sort by uh, folder name, by file name, and it's always going to be chronological. And that's just how my brain works in a very chronological order. And then if you want to save your videos to a subfolder, you can name it here. And then if you're importing log files, if any, you can put them in here. Um, and then there's this add IPTC information. And again, this is not something I use, but uh, you know, there is software out there for cataloging your photos and it uses this IPTC information. But Workspace, as far as I know, doesn't have that ability. If it does, uh, I'll come back and do another video on that, but I normally just leave this off. I don't have any reason to use this personally. And everything looks good here. So I've changed the name, shooting date first. I have the folder name to shooting date format, and I'm gonna click OK. Now I'm gonna do one more thing here because I don't want it to save everything to this folder Olympus Workspace directly. So I'm going to click the refer button and tell it to save it to a different folder. Most of the time I export to my external drive down here and then go into pictures and then I break things down by year and I go into year and I break things down by quarter. And then by quarter you can see everything is chronological from here. And then within each folder, the files are also, the, file, the, the picture names are also uh, chronological. But for this video, we're going to start with this because this does not have any subfolders. So I'm going to create a subfolder called new using the same logic and call this 2019. And then under 2019, I'm going to create a new folder called first quarter. And the reason I do that because I take, you know, tens of thousands of pictures every year. And if I had everything under just one 2019 folder, it, it would just make that folder really long. So I like to break it down by quarter. So I have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And I think I showed you that here. Like so. So I'm using the same idea here. And we'll say OK. So now you'll notice that the destination is now 2019 first quarter. Create subfolder with shoot date automatically. And I'm going to import all 13 images. And then I'm going to check this box to browse them immediately. So let's do an import. And you'll notice here that this last import uh, row here is highlighted because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the last thing we imported, not necessarily where they got imported to. Where they got imported to is over in here, Olympus Workspace 2019, first quarter, and then on this day. So you can see I'm using the same folder structure that I normally use with my uh, on my external drive, but I wanted to show you how to do this if you are starting from scratch. So this is not the only way you can organize your uh, imports and your photos, but I wanted to show you step by step how I do it, and hopefully that'll give you some ideas 
on how to organize a photo in a way that works for you. But this is what works for me. And uh, just a quick example here, like this file here, I know was shot with my EM1 Mark II because the exit data is here. But if I look at this file, the exit data does not record the uh, which camera it was recording to. So I can tell by the file name that this was recorded on my EM1 Mark II.